So now that we can push vectors forward using smooth maps between manifolds, we can also pull them back. Um, so basically, once you have sort of a construction, you also often have a dual construction in any sort of linear algebraic or algebraic framework. Um, so if I have a function from one manifold to another, then the pullback, okay, so so what are we what are we pulling back? We're pulling back differential forms. So why are we doing this? Because uh, we can also push vectors forward and differential forms eat vectors. So the pullback um, of omega, a differential form k form on n, is the differential k form on m given by how it eats vectors. So what it's going to do is it's going to eat vectors um, based on the push forward of f. So I plug in to f pullback omega um, vectors v1 through vk, and I just compute what it is based on omega on the push forward of uh, v1 through vk. Um, notice that uh, Fortney often uses a different notation. So he'll often write t pullback f or t pullback at a point f instead of, so these are the same thing as f pullback. Um, the f pullback, the f star notation is uh, more common. So that's what we're going to be using. OK, so as an example, if I have x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. So remember, this determined our function f from r2 in r theta coordinates to r2 in x, y coordinates. So where r theta got mapped to x, y. Um, I can compute using just like the fact that x is a function of r and theta. I could compute dx. dx is cosine theta dr minus r sine theta dy, sorry, d theta. But actually, secretly, I can also compute um, dx as, uh, I, I can also, this is, this is also secretly computing uh, f pullback of dx. So using my, my definition of pullback, f pullback dx is equal to, um, so it's equal to some function of, you know, some function of r and theta times dr plus some function of r and theta times d theta. So the way to figure out what it is is to plug in d by dr and d by d theta and then see what those coefficients are. So f pullback of d by dx is dx of f push forward d by dr. And f push forward of d by dr, well, that's just um, that's just going to be the first column of the uh, Jacobian matrix of of f, so that'll be um, cosine theta d by dx plus sine theta d by dy. And then dx, um, when it eats this vector, is just going to give me cosine theta. So this tells me that the coefficient in front of dr and dx is cosine theta, which is exactly what I wanted, right? So I wanted to show, um, show this. So I know that um, I know that the coefficient in front of dr of of x of dx has to be um, you know dx eating dr, d by dr. But what exactly does that mean? I have to compute that as f pullback dx. And similarly, I can get using this definition of pullback dx f pullback dx eating d by d theta is dx eating f push forward d by d theta, which is dx eating um, negative r sine theta d by dx plus r cosine theta d by dy, the second column of the, the Jacobian of f. Um, and then this will just be negative r sine theta. So I see that here. Those are equal. And this generalizes basically um, to any so if I want to compute, so if f is a function from Rn to Rm, and I want to compute, um, so I write f as f1 through fn, then uh, so sort of df, so say this, these first variables are x1 through xn, 
and these are F1 through FM. Sorry, that should be an M. Then DFI is just equal to sort of like DFI thought of as, as sort of D of the function FI from RN to R is equal to the pullback under F of DFI thought of as, as sort of the coordinate like the coordinate DFI, like, yeah, like as the coordinate DFI on RM. So these are going to be the same thing. Um, if I want to compute something more complicated, like a, a wedge product of differential forms, one of the ways I can do it, so if I want to compute, um, I'll, I'll, I'll do an example. So to compute something like DX wedge DY, I just wedge my values for dx and dy. So um, dy I can compute as f pullback dy, which is, you know, using my same method. Um, this is going to be sine theta dr plus r um, cosine theta d theta. So then dx wedge dy is equal to um, is equal to uh, let's put in this. And plug in this. And then what I end up getting. So only the dr wedge d theta terms will go will um, remain. The dr wedge dr and d theta wedge d theta terms will disappear. So um, I can see that this will end up being r cosine squared theta plus r sine squared theta dr wedge d theta, which is just r dr wedge d theta, which kind of explains how and when you change um, variables from polar to cylindrical coordinates, you um, if you're integrating something, you know, you integrate it dx dy, sorry, dx dx dy, not dx dx. It doesn't make any sense. You, when you try to integrate the same thing using polar coordinates, you need to remember to put this r in. And that's because dx wedge dy is actually equal to r times dr wedge d theta, not dr wedge d theta. Um, so in, uh, and if I want to pull back um, a volume form, so here's another uh, another example. So, or sort of not an example, but just in general, what to do to a volume form. So if I have, so I, I have my F um, from one manifold using coordinates x1 through xn to my other manifold using coordinates f1 through fn here um th this only well this, i mean this makes sense um more generally i can always pull back a volume form but i'm only going to get this nice formula when the dimensions are the same so when domain and range have the same dimension um so i'm using coordinates x on m and f on n so all I need to compute is what the pullback of the volume form on N does at um, E1 through EN, um, where these are you know, elements of the tangent space to a point of M. And that's because, remember, my volume form, like the, so this is all I need to compute because the top level forms on Rn are just spanned by a single form, dx1 wedge all the way out to dxn. So basically, I just need to compute like what the coefficient is here. So that's going to equal this. Um, so let's compute it. So f pullback of df1 wedge all the way out to dfn applied to e1 
through EN is equal to DF1 wedge all the way out, DFN, um, F push forward E1 through F push forward EN. But now, okay, so this is just um, DF1 wedge all the way out to DFN. This uh, is just going to be the first column of DF. So all the way out to the nth column of df. And then using the determinant definition of the wedge product, like, you know, when I take all of df1 through dfn um, applied to these columns, I'm going to end up just getting um, the entries in each of the columns. So this is just the determinant of the Jacobian of df. Uh, so that's a really nice way to compute um, what the, oh, sorry, and it should be times dx1 all the way out through dx. Oh, actually, no, no, no. So this, so this implies that the pullback of df1 um, all the way out to dfn is equal to the determinant of df times dx1 all the way out to dxn. Um, another thing you can do if you want more examples is read Fortney section 6.5, where he studies um, cylindrical and spherical coordinates. Cylindrical and spherical coordinates on R3 and computes the pullbacks of volume forms for that.